Okay, good afternoon everybody. I'm Jay Fidel with Think Tech Hawaii. This afternoon we'll reintroduce, we'll introduce and reintroduce a new show about public health issues in Hawaii and how our Department of Health identifies and manages these issues for everyone. Beginning today, continuing every other week, we're going to explore different areas of the Department of Health, what they do, and meet the experts who work there. So our show today, our first show, our premier show, is called, well, Hawaii, the State of Health. And our first episode here is called mm, Better Eating in Hawaii Through Your Department of Health. And we, we're talking specifically about the food safety programs. Okay, and that's really important. And I've seen stickers on windows. We all have lately. And we want to know what that means and how you get it and, what it, and how it protects you. That's the thing. Um, because people in Hawaii eat out a lot. You know, I know I do. And I, when I was younger, I didn't eat out this much. My wife took better care of me. And uh, she, she, she cooked at home for me all the time. Now we eat out more. And there seems to be more choices. But then more choices is more risks. So we have guests on this first show, this premiere show. Uh, Peter Oshiro and Aaron Villanueva of the Department of Health Food Safety Programs. Okay, Peter Oshiro is the Environmental Health Program Manager for Sanitation, Food, Drug, and Vector Control. Who vector control? We're not going to talk about vector control today, though, right? <laughs> no. And Aaron Villanueva is a sanitarian. We're going to talk about that. Uh, and a program specialist. So welcome to the show, you guys. Hi, Aaron. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Nice to have you here. So this is good. And thanks to the people from the Department of Health who came around, okay, who were sitting in our gallery and, and watching and helping and giving us moral support on this very important show. A shout out to the Department <laughs> of Health and to Ginny Pressler, its new director. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, let's find out what you guys are doing. All right. First of all, what is it that you do at the department? Erin? So, um, well, our sanitation branch or the food safety branch is part of the Environmental Health Services Division of the Department of Health There's of the state of Hawaii. Be sure you're getting good uh, sound. Okay, good. Sorry. Okay. So our mission is to protect and promote the Are we live? Oh, I'm sorry. So our mission is to protect and promote the health and well being of Hawaii's residents and visitors. Got it. What do you do all day? Um, I am the program specialist, so I am part of the support staff for our field staff, so if they have any questions, they direct their questions to me. So the people out in the field call you? Our staff. Your staff in mm -hmm. the field Our inspectors. You. Okay, inspectors. Mm -hmm. Yes. I always wanted to be an inspector, you know, well, make, you know, make movies out there, mm -hmm. make a camera. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay, so you're in the office, they're in the field, mm -hmm. and you're, you know, sort of getting information from them. Okay, that's the important. What is a sanitarian? What is that? Is that like a hygienist? Uh, well, common layman's terms uh, are better known as health inspector. So we are the ones who goes out and does inspectional work at food establishments. You go out also? No, I am a support staff. Sanitarians go out, but you're a sanitarian. You're a supervisor sanitarian. I guess you can see okay, it. Okay, just one yeah. So people should understand. Okay, Peter. Yes. Do you know Aaron? Yes, I do know Erin. <laughs> you work with her every day? Yes, Erin was one of my staff, my support staff. She's okay. one of our critical employees because her job is, as she said, to standardize staff, to make sure our field inspection staff are all enforcing the law in the same manner and consistently. Right. So her job is to do um, interpretations of rules and to give um, sanitarians advice in the field how to conduct themselves and make sure procedures are followed. Right. Um, the same as it with so everybody. You're, you're, this is enforcement. We're talking about enforcement. Yes, it is. People don't necessarily send you Christmas cards. Right. No, but see, <laughs> it's a good deal because we enforce through education. So yeah, our, okay. our big um, message to all our field inspection staff is always educate first. Um, voluntary compliance is always the way to go. Once you sure. start going down the road of formal enforcement, it's very counterproductive. Yes, I We agree. end up talking to attorneys rather than dealing with people in the field. Right? Yes, oh, so. that's great. That's so that's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, and you guys have been collectively, uh, you've been with the department for how long? 50 years? What? I've been there for a long time. I'm about 26 years or so already. 26 yeah, years? So, so young. Would you went you went in when you were three? Yeah, I, I started at seven. I was exceptional at that time. No, but I, I was about twenty-seven when I started. So yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the age. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you're just feeling it, but you're not looking it. Okay. All right, Aaron. How about you? I have a measly eight years under eight my years? belt. You, you sound like that's not enough time. Well, compared to time. twenty-five. <laughs> okay. 
I understand. All right, so where is the Department of Health anyway? Is it, that's the big building on Punchbowl there across the hospital? Yeah, that's our administrative building. So that's where all our um, directors and deputy directors are housed and mm -hmm. the personnel, the human resources, the money people. Our program is, um, we're housed all over the place. As the Department of Health is very large. Our office is down by um, Alamana Health Center, which is across the street from Restaurant Row. Oh, okay, yeah, so, there's but, restaurants in there. Yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, but okay, so uh, so the Department of Health actually occupies more than one building. Oh yeah, we're all over the place. Yeah, so yeah, it's okay. a very large department with a lot of varied things. You want to take a minute and tell me all the things, I mean if you can, all the things the department does. Wow, that's really difficult. My, Just in general right, my side is on the Environmental Health Administration, so our program is involved with all the water pollution issues, air pollution issues. Um, the Environmental Health Services Division, which is our, our program, handles all the restaurant inspection, the vector control program, food and drug issues. Vector, I love right. vector. What is vector? Vectors are things that actually transmit communicable diseases okay. to man. So yeah, so we're concerned with mosquitoes and rodents are the big issues okay. for vector control. And then there's other portions of the health department that has the Hawaii State Hospitals, um, behavioral and mental health issues. So there's a lot of other programs. It's a very, very large and um, very varied department. So. Well, this is a healthy state, though, don't you agree? I mean, I uh, really think it is. So I mean, we, we do a real longer, good job. We, have, yeah. we, don't, mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of public health issues. Right. Really. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys are standing in between us and the public health issues. Right. That's our job, <laughs> trying to keep people well yeah, through our activities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. Okay. So this now is a piece about restaurants today, mm -hmm. and I think it's a great way to start our series. Um, so restaurants are everywhere. As mentioned right. before, you know, there was a time when people ate at home. But I don't, you know, it's just, I mean, everybody's out all the time yeah. now. They, they, and, and lunch it used to be a you little know, brown bag kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, no, no, i got to go to a restaurant. Um, and so the restaurants proliferate. Mm -hmm. and some of them open on a shoestring. You know, they say about restaurants, you, you know, you don't know if it's going to work or not. You can right. pour money into it, and then six months later it's gone. That's which right. means there's always a capital problem, at least yes. for the mom and pop mm -hmm. restaurants, which means they don't have a lot of money to put into hygiene and, and following the rules sometimes, you know. Um, so somebody has to protect us from the possibility that they won't follow the rules because there are all kinds of antigens out there that we have to be so careful about. And luckily, we don't have a lot of incidents, although maybe you can tell me about some. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how do you approach this? Now, this is, this is a, a new initiative, yeah, you're talking about? Yes, our rules, yes. So, okay, what was before and what changed when you went into the new initiative? I guess the old uh, rule was based on um, a local regulation that was based loosely on federal guidelines. So what we did in 2000, well, in the last year when we adopted this rule in 2014 was we adopted the 2009 FDA model food code, which is a national standard. So it's very important that now Hawaii is using a, the most um, scientific, scientifically advanced technology to protect public health through the adoption of the 2009 so food the code. The rule change was about technology then. Oh, well, it's about right, new, correct. new kinds yes. of technology. Well, it's about emerging pathogens. And, you know, before in the past, nobody ever got um, sick from a hamburger or died from it. And yeah, a yeah. jack-in-a-box managed to kill people with um, undercooked hamburgers. Now we see um, problems in our produce supply. Nobody ever got sick from a salad, from spinach, from eating cantaloupes. And now those are major... The rat, um, the rat right. worm. That's actually not too much of a, a concern. It's it's a, a it is a health <laughs> issue, but it's a, it's not that large a concern. Right, on the big it's island. Not, right. It's yeah. like gardens and mm -hmm. all that stuff. It is. Yeah, okay, but you got to be careful with everything. Right. Though. Nowadays, everything and somehow is Somehow the antigens are more dangerous. Somehow. Right. Yeah. So. So we've had to change our program to keep up with that. A lot of the new rules and regulations are based on science of what we call emerging pathogens that we're trying to protect the public from. Okay. Okay. So, so the rules, what they define what is what is to be found they define your your investigation they define the kinds of antigens you're looking for is that what it is um actually what it is is we focus on foodborne illness risk factors so these are things that happen in the environment in the restaurant environment that cause people to get sick so the five major things we look at is personal hygiene is really key. So of the people who touch food. Right. So restaurants have to ensure that their employees are of good health. Yeah. Make sure they're washing hands at yeah. the appropriate times. Yeah. 
And the other big thing, again, is temperature control. So whether you're cooking foods to proper temperature, that's really, really critical also. Um, whether or not your foods are from approved sources, so you're not buying someone's um, game that they just shot or some roadkill that brought into the back <laughs> of a restaurant that they want to serve. So that's really important, too, that these restaurants are buying their foods from all these approved distributors. We look at things like um, cleaning and sanitizing, disinfection of utensils. So all those things is what are, we're focusing on now. No more focus on the floors, walls, and ceilings of past. So the inspection oh, protocol is so really you're changed. So the sources, the vectors, right. Food the risk conditions factors. that right. may allow the, the, the antigens Correct. to, oh, this is, this is a new idea. Right. It's, and that's the modern, that's the FDA modern yes. approach. Yes. Uh, one thing is that, are you guys involved in agriculture? I mean, do you go out for, if, if you find mm -hmm. that Joe Dokes is uh, selling lettuce, right. don't say how he grows it, mm -hmm. uh, to restaurants in general, mm -hmm. and the restaurants tell you, you know, that they're buying lettuce from Joe Dokes. Do you go out and look at Joe Dokes's farm? You know, actually not. That's the Department of Agriculture. Okay. They handle, um, I guess, regulations as far as pesticide use in the field, soil conservation, those issues. Yeah. Farmers in Hawaii and pretty much throughout the nation, they are unregulated to the point where they do not need a permit from the health department as long as it's raw agricultural commodity yeah. they don't treat it and they, they can sell it directly to restaurants yeah. without permit but you're going to look at the way the restaurant prepares it yes cleans oh, it that's where our rules step in correct so. yeah okay wow this is exciting because you know we do trust the restaurants right to take care of us mm -hmm. we go in i mean speaking for myself mm -hmm. we go into a hawaii restaurant and we you know we honestly i always feel the Department of Health is there with me. Oh, well, that's good. Watching out for me. <laughs> and, that, and that no restaurateur mm. can really be sloppy uh, because of you guys. And so, you know, I feel comfortable mm -hmm. uh, in most restaurants anyway that I eat at. Uh, and um, my wife too. And so that's the important thing. Um, and we also, you know, want to avoid situations where a lot of people get sick. That's not right. a good thing. And why? Because the tourist economy, right? Yes. And if they read on the front page about some you know, outbreak, Ooh, right. that's not so good. So, you know, you have a double whammy there mm -hmm. uh, with any outbreak. Okay, so those are the rules. And now one morning you decide you're going to put this in place. Mm -hmm. What do you do? And how is Aaron involved on that morning? <laughs> <laughs> You well, expected <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually what evolved was um, for myself as the program manager, what we were lacking in as far as our program was inspection frequency. So our staffing was not enough to support a program where you're going to inspect at a frequency to prevent a constant occurrence of these food illness risk factors. So my biggest job was to um, get legislation passed so that we could use restaurant permit fees to hire additional employees, additional inspectors in the field, Excellent idea. right? To go at um, advanced computerized web inspection-based systems. That's great. So yes. that's how we started this. Good government. I like it. Well, you got to give industry a lot of credit for buying into this. So I always say Hawaii Restaurant Association, the Food Industry Association, Hawaii Hotel and Lodging, they were all very instrumental in supporting our rules and regulations. Why? They, I think they knew it from their end Why? that a well customer protects their benefit as well. When they have a pass placard in front of their restaurant or facility, it helps their business to give their consumers confidence yeah. that their place has been inspected and is running properly so people won't get sick. Okay, so, so they, 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 they recognize the high value of the program. They joined They were out oh, there, absolutely. they were in the legislature also supporting your bill. We actually didn't have to pass the bill. We already had the um, legislative ability to pass administrative rules. So when we created this new administrative rules, I have to go to the small business um, community association, to all these people, so that they don't protest to the governor not to sign the rule because it infringes on their business. So I needed to get them on board um, where the point where they would not be protesting to the governor about the health department's um, overbearing rules. So that's where it was very important to get them on board to buy into this. So that's I, what I love they this did. story. It's a great story. You know, it's a great mm, yeah. story. You realize he's a hero, oh, right? He you is why we got things going. Yeah. He really is, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm getting that feeling. Okay, I'm getting that feeling so much so, so much so that I need to take a break. Oh, very okay. good. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, Peter Oshiro and Aaron Villanueva. They are both with the Department of Health uh, here in Hawaii, the state of health, okay? And today we're talking about better eating through the Department of Health. And we are learning stuff that we didn't know, and we are finding that... The people in the Department of Health can get things done, that's why. Okay, we'll be right back.
Ted Ralston, folks, host of our show at Think Tech Hawaii called Where the Road Leads, where we talk about technology influencing the future of Hawaii. Technology, of course, is the art of solving problems. We always bring in interesting and informed guests who can see from different perspectives and different points of view how that future might unfold and how technology can assist us in getting there. So once again, join us 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Fridays. Uh, Ted Ralston, your host. And please, if you have ideas that you'd like us to address on this show or folks who you think should be on it, let us know. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I host a show called Healthcare in Hawaii here on ThinkTech. We get together once a week or sometimes uh, twice a month. Depends. When we're busy, we get together less often. But we love to see you here to talk about the preeminent healthcare issues in our state. Our programs vary very widely. We talk about economics, we talk about healthcare, we talk about social issues on this program. Thanks for joining us. Okay, we're back, we're live. I'm Jay Fidel here in the State of Health, the Hawaii the State of Health, with uh, Aaron Villanueva on my left and Peter Rochier at the far side. And they're both in the Department of Health, and this is the Department of Health show. And we're talking about better eating in restaurants in Hawaii through the Department of Health. We have this new system which looks at you know, more sophisticated metrics, if you will, and dangers to see if the restaurants, including all restaurants, uh, are, you know, are, are safe for us to eat food and the handling and so forth. So, okay, you, that, that was really a good thing that you, that, you got, that you got this through without legislation. So you found authority in, the, in, the, in your rulemaking and then you lobbied the rules among the, the stakeholders. This is really good. This is a good government, even better than I thought. Uh, okay, so now you make the rules. I mean, I really, I think every agency ought to try the approach you, you did. I think that's the way it should work. Uh, how long ago was that anyway? Actually, we started the concept back in 2009, 2010, because there were a lot of tiers. We had to change the law that allowed us to use the restaurant permit fees for specific purposes. Mm -hmm. And then once that, that law was changed, now I had to change the administrative rule to increase restaurant permit fees and to introduce the placketing right. program. Because in the yeah. end of the day, it's economics. Exactly. You have yeah. to have the money to do yes. the job. Yes. OK, so, so uh, Peter comes to you one day and he says, uh, Aaron, we got this new project. Mm -hmm. And we have to get to, we have to you know, to migrate the troops. I mean, um, we're going to have to get everybody together. You have to get a field, field group. Go out there and, and make this happen. It's a new initiative. So what happened? What kind of day was that? Did you have a good day? It was an exciting day <laughs> because it was years in the making till uh, we had drafted our new rules, but it was years till it was actually signed by the governor and approved. So um, February 2014 is when the rules were signed by the governor and we started to initiate Chapter 50. What's so Chapter 50? Chapter 50 is the name of our new rules okay. uh, under Hawaii. Chapter yes, 50. Hawaii okay. Administrative Rules Chapter 50. So um, along with the new rules, we have to train staff. So um, we had to train staff, have them familiarize with the new set of rules because it was very different from how our previous rules was, um, how it was laid out. So they had to familiarize themselves. They had to get comfortable with it. And not everything is black and white. So they do need help with interpretation. Uh, give me an example. Um, let's say like uh, if uh, food is in our new rules, we don't, we don't have a restriction as far as a pass-through window. Now, in our, for our, let's say, mobile food establishments. Now, our inspector- More and more of those now, yeah. Yes, so let's say our field inspector goes in and sees, and our rules clearly state that we don't have a restriction, but they may determine that based on observation, whether or not they see flies or vectors or an issue with the size of their pass-through, do they need to restrict the size? So um, based on their professional judgment, along with discussion with me, we would discuss whether or not we need to restrict that size. So that's one, that's an example of how staff so would need. You have to make a judgment call yes. on exactly whether it's the right size or yes. not. And, and yes, that would yes. depend on a lot of circumstances. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. OK, so, okay. so did you hire new people or use existing staff? We have existing staff, but we have um, bumped up the numbers to how many now in the field? Yeah, we went from nine, 13. We filled four positions to get 13 in the field about three or four years ago. And we're at 23 in the field right now with two training. 
and we have um, six more people to hire probably in a couple months. Sure. So we'll be have about 31 people in Oahu, so for the Oahu staff. Oahu? Yes, just only, Oahu. We're only talking about yes. Oahu? Yes. Oh, others on the neighbor island? Right, the neighbor island has a staff of eight on the big island. Yeah. Um, they have eight positions available on Maui with five, uh, four filled, and they have three positions on Kauai, and all of those are filled. Okay. So they, they have similar staff and similar function that Oahu has. Now, they were going out before, but they weren't looking oh, yes. at all the same issues. Right. Now, they're, with this training and with these new FDA-type rules, they have to look at more and they have to make more technological, scientific right. interpretations. Again, we focus on the risk factors. Right, yeah. right. This is important. Mm -hmm. yes. Because then you have a longer a longer throw on exactly what you're covering. It's not just what's in front of your nose. Mm -hmm. It's it's more scientific. Right. Okay, so now you have now you sit and you have all these people in front of you and you're gonna tell them what to do, how they're gonna change their day. Okay, was that the same day or another day? Oh, this is still ongoing. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> this right, is a so work in progress. Th this is like uh, Hill Street Blues, you know. They say, have a good day out there. You know, save, save the people. <laughs> Let's be healthy. <laughs> so, um, kind of have a meeting with them and, and uh, you know, sort of train them and tell them what kind of we day they have. We do have in-office training. Yeah. And that kind of simulates um, what they would meet out in the field. So, we do this about every every other month and the topic of that in-office exercise depends on what the staff may be encountering in the field so, so feedback you get feedback yes i do get feedback you we do adapt get feedback. to that yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah so training is based on that so we mimic scenarios of foodborne illness cases or what if they have an irate um Restaurant owner, restaurant tour. Yes, rest or restaurant <laughs> owner who does not want premises. exactly, <laughs> who does not even want you to come on his property. So we do kind of uh, scenarios again s to help better um, assist our staff yeah, it's law enforcement. to prepare That's them. Yeah. you guys are like I'm paid to say this. You like law enforcement. That's what it is. And you have to, you know, deal with people with that kind of thing in mind. So speak softly and carry your big yeah. stick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so now they're ready. They're trained. They know how to do this, and they go out into the field. You know, have a good day out there, <laughs> boys and girls. <laughs> okay, what do they do all day? What do they do? They go to restaurants, right. right? They have a list. Each one has an area. Is that what happens? Yes. And they go to the restaurants in that area. And you are familiar with the restaurants because each restaurant has to sign up. You know yes. all the restaurants yes. in yes. the state. If they're selling food for money, mm -hmm. they're on your list. Right. They should be. Right. Should yes. be. Yes. They're supposed to be. Right. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to sign yes. up. Okay. And, and presumably they're not going to get too far if they don't sign up because other agencies will catch them. Well, uh, I guess the beauty of the enforcement program too is because all the sanitarians have a specific geographic area they work out of. Mm -hmm. That's where they are every day. So if they see someone on the side of the road selling things out of a cooler, it's automatic. So it's geographic, and yeah. yeah, it's just yeah. like the. Uh, yeah. It's like the police system in Japan, right, exactly. where you have a, you have a police, right, police, the police station, and, and, right. yeah, yeah. and it's just, it just deals mm -hmm. with that block, right. that geographical area. Okay, so he's going to know. Right, who's, so who's it's there. very efficient that way. So even when things go uncorrected, or even when we put up placards and somebody takes it down, our inspectors are in the area every day, so it's kind of hard to... Is that right? Yeah. It's that often? Well, Monday through Friday, not Okay, day, okay, yeah. but that, that is something. Yes. So, so if I'm a restaurateur, mm -hmm. Uh, your inspector walks in, they call right. the inspectors, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and I say, good morning, inspector. <laughs> uh, what happens? He says, I'd like to see your place. Yeah, we go ahead, introduce ourselves, show our credentials, and then proceed to the kitchen to see how they handle their food. Okay, and usually the restaurateur is cooperative and nice about this because he knows that there's no choice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and so and and the inspector is watching for things and making notes about things. Mm -hmm. What is he? I mean, if you can mm -hmm. figure out the priorities on it, what is he most concerned about as he walks around? So again, we've moved more than um, to what our inspection used to be. It's now a ri what we call a risk-based approach. So what the inspector will do will go ahead and observe things, um, determine what items need to be addressed quickly. Let's say um, an employee is handling a sandwich with their bare hands. Um, they would, the inspector would immediately correct that and say that they would need to use gloves to prepare ready-to-eat foods. Um, 
and they would also check for, let's say, cooking temperatures. Let's say you ordered a local moko. Your inspector will want to check that that local moko, that patty, is cooked to the proper temperature before it goes out the window. So he'd be, look, he'd be doing sort of spot checks? Well, he would do a quick walkthrough and then determine which activities he needs to address first and whereas others that he can kind of check later because the ones he wants to address first are the ones that he'll probably miss if he just goes and checks right. the so, walk-in cooler or something else. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So this is, the, this is the action part of the restaurant, which is really happening. You can happening. think of it that way, yes. But am I right to say that, uh, I guess I should know this, uh, that every food handler wears clothes? They should be wearing That's gloves, yes, unless they have a written procedure that says otherwise. Okay. So a cook in a restaurant, would, and a, a sandwich preparer, anybody who touches the food with his or her hands. Anyone who handles ready-to-eat foods. So Including let's say somebody who handles ready to and you, um, you have to wear gloves or use utensils, so no bare hand contact with anything that's ready to eat. So a raw steak, if you really wanted to, you can slab that on the grill. But once that's finished cooking, besides the fact that it's too hot, yeah. you want to use tongs to plate it. Okay, but so what happens in the loco moco? Um, you know, I, I never have loco moco myself. <laughs> but what happens in a loco moco situation if the inspector finds that the loco part of the loco Mm -hmm. is not being cooked right, the meat part, okay? Um, so suppose, uh, suppose the restaurateur says to him, not that this would be true, but mm -hmm. he says, you know, he likes it really rare. Mm -hmm. Well, you know? we do have conditions in our rules. Yeah. As long as we, uh, they have a consumer advisory, they can serve the meat at uh, the customer's preference. But otherwise, that meat should be cooked to an internal temperature of 155. So that means it's no longer pink inside. Okay, so it should be no pink. You shouldn't, if you open no it, pink. you shouldn't be, mm -hmm. see pink. But again, the uh, restaurants can serve it to a customer's preference as long as they have a consumer advisory. It's just that statement, uh, as you mentioned, you go out to eat often, you'll see different foods marked with an asterisk and then a, a statement like on maybe the on the bottom, yes, okay. that says um, maybe consuming undercooked or raw foods may increase your risk of foodborne illness. Sure. Mm -hmm. You remember that you know the term apoint? A point, uh, P O I N T, to the point. Oh. <laughs> and in, in French, if uh -huh. you go into a restaurant that serves meat and you say, I want it a point, uh -huh. it means exactly medium, uh, no pink. Okay. I'm not uh, saying I've you should put that in your rules. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a relationship there. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of the rules based is too is, um, you know, consumers want to eat things raw. People will eat undercooked steaks, um, they want their fish raw, and that's fine. But the main focus to protect public health is consumers need to know that if they do that, it, there are risky behaviors they and have everything. To assume the risk. So it's clearly stated that if you do consume or if you order your rare steak yeah. rare or your hamburger rare, yeah. it's up to the restaurant to do it. Um, someone like the big companies, they won't do it because their corporate says you are not allowed no matter what the customer wants. You will cook this thoroughly. That's what I would say if I was a big company. Correct. So everyone has chance. different, right? So obviously high-end restaurants that will cook steaks to order, they will allow it and as long as you, right, you can eat it raw as long as you have a consumer advisory on your menu where you'll let your um, customers know that they are taking a risk. So, so, uh, so the rule then that the, mem the menu yes. has to include a little That's part of the new rule, yes. With yes. some text that says right. you, uh, you assume the risk. Correct. That's great. That's and if you just don't do it, then you don't have to put that consumer advisory, right? Mm -hmm. So right. If, if you never cook anything raw, no matter how much your customer screens for it, then right. you, don't, you don't need the Which, So you advisory. won't see it in McDonald's. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. Okay, well, okay. What else, uh, what else are the priorities that the inspector is looking for? So uh, besides cook to temperatures, you, uh, you want to observe how the employees are handling the food. Do they wash the hands prior to handling food? Do they wash the hands in between tasks? So you stand there and watch. You, watch you do. Them, sort of like time and motion study. You watch them as they go through their work day. Make sure they're doing mm -hmm, it. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. So they, uh, you want your inspector, the inspectors will focus in on that and then later walk through the establishment to see if there are any other activities. Let's say if um, one restaurant is cooking stew, they want to catch if they are cooling that stew. If they're, um, let's say if they cook a large batch to serve for uh, several, a uh, couple of days. If they are cooling that, they want to take temperature just to make sure they're following proper procedures. I mean, you got to keep it hot for a period of time to make sure that it doesn't develop anything. So you want to keep it hot, and when you're ready to cool it, you want to bring it down to the proper temperatures within um, a certain amount of time. Right, and then put it in the refrigerator. Yes. Yeah. 
I don't see, I wouldn't know this. But you know, it's really interesting because what you guys are talking about is something I think the public should know. Yeah. The public should know what you know what should be happening in the kitchen. The public should know what you're looking for because this is really a shared responsibility. You know, we, we all have uh, a stake in making sure the restaurants are conducting themselves because you know they come, they go. New right. ones open, yeah. and the people that open the new restaurants don't necessarily know. That's right. So yeah. we got to make sure they all follow. Them. Okay, what else did they do? I'm so curious. This is great. Are you enjoying this discussion? I want you to. <laughs> so after that, the, um, really again, they're focused on the risk-based factors. We want to minimize our um, intrusion into the restaurant. We don't want to hinder their operation. So really what our inspection is a snapshot in time of their operation. So we are there for about hour, hour 15, again, posting that's Focusing the average on the risk inspection time. Factors. And, yes. and it's, it's uh, you don't tell them when you're coming. You just no, come. it's a surprise. Yeah, good, should be. Should mm -hmm. be. Otherwise, they'll prepare for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. <laughs> but we do categorize our uh, food establishments into three categories: uh, high, low, uh, medium, and low risk. Really? Yes. What are they? What are the risk? What uh, was that based on? So. Uh, it depends on the food operation. So a high risk, let's say a sit-down restaurant, who will um, handle the food. Uh, who will do more operations with the food like um, cooking, cooling, reheating, whereas someone who's assembling a sandwich, maybe they're just doing cold holding. So high risk establishments, we do uh, three inspections. We are planning to do three inspections a year. Medium, we do twice a year. And then low risk categories, we would do annually. Okay, so every restaurant falls, because of the nature of the restaurant, it falls in one of those risk categories. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they know. Mm -hmm. They know what category they're yes. in. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take a short break. We'll have a we'll have a little bite now. Okay. <laughs> and when we come back and then you know I like to talk about what happens depending mm -hmm. on your findings. Mm -hmm. If if you're you know if you find good or you right. find not so good, what happens? Okay. Uh, that's uh, Aaron Villanueva who I was just talking to who did so well. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter Oshiro, who also did really well. Uh, here in Hawaii, the state of health talking about better eating in Hawaii through the Department of Health. We're learning a lot. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Aloha. I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at Think Tech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m. to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad, learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out. Every Back, we're live. Uh, we're here with Aaron Villanueva and Peter Oshiro here in Hawaii, the State of Health, which is uh, is the series um, organized by the State Department of Health with Think Tech. And we're talking about better eating in Hawaii through the Department of Health. So, you know, it's really one interesting thing. I, I'll throw it out for discussion. I was watching television, the news, about a week ago, and there was a story about a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And the story about the restaurant, it didn't follow the rules. You guys must know about this, yeah? And, and um, they got, they got a, one of those signs in the front that said something like, failed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what the, all the signs are. And this was on the 6 o'clock news. Mm -hmm. Those guys must have been so embarrassed. <laughs> I think uh, the place must have been really quiet for a long time. <laughs> Nobody would come around. I wouldn't go to a restaurant that failed. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to name names. Right. We don't need to do that. But tell me how that works. Well, one the big component of the rule that we passed, I had to do with um, ensuring that restaurants um, correct their violations in a voluntary basis. And part of that is social pressure. We strongly believe that the way to get behavioral change, behavioral change in industry is through governmental transparency. And what that means is we grade restaurants now with our placard program. So can you going to see this if I hold this up? So if you pass the inspection, which means you get one major violation or less of one foodborne illness risk factor or less that can be corrected prior to the inspector leaving the establishment it's what you call a pass they've passed their inspection everything is great and he and he puts that on the, the window. inspector places this in the window not the establishment so the inspectors are responsible for placing this up this is the property of the department of health right so, so this is what we're putting in the window so this is new inspector. this is brand new program this is part of our new rules so the inspector finds that they only had one thing right. 
that doesn't have to be corrected at that moment right now. It does no, it have to be it corrected on site because, again, we're only talking about um, violations that lead to foodborne illnesses. So okay. these yeah. are critical violations. It has to be corrected in a um, timely fashion. Okay. So if they cannot, if they can correct it on the spot, it's fine. They get the green card. If they cannot correct it or they have two or more major violations, yeah. Even if they can correct those two, we're going to put this up on their wall, which is a conditional pass placard, and it'll show exactly why they didn't pass. So these are the general categories of um, violations that we look at. And those as categories far as major are? Can you, can, can you yes, there are um, food temperatures, employee hygiene, um, protecting the food from contamination, um, the facility and equipment sanitation, which is the disinfection of glasses and utensils, insect rodent control, and unapproved food sources. <laughs> that would keep me away. This is the kind of thing you were talking about. This is what this right. is what yes. the inspector would look right. like. Right. Yes. Uh, and what's the third one? The third one is uh, the place has an imminent health hazard. So um, if we'll you put fail, this you close. close. No, it's not because what this program is not designed to close restaurants. This program is designed to get cooperation and correction. Closed establishments, this will only be put up if the restaurant refuses to close when we find an intimate health hazard and they say, no, we're just going to stay open and ignore us. So at that point, we're going to put this on the wall, we're going to go talk to our attorney general, and we're going to try and attempt to um, suspend their permit. Yes. So oh, if they don't follow the permit is the health department permit to yes, operate a restaurant? permit to operate a restaurant. Okay, right. so when you say closed, you don't mean that it's necessarily closed. You say you've asked them nicely to close. Exactly, and they yeah. refused. Yes. So if they voluntarily close, if they have pending violations, we'll still put up the conditional pass placard, but they need to close their doors for business to avoid having the red placard posted. If they don't, if they don't fix Correct. those check marks. Right. So okay. what this does is this stays up on the wall mm -hmm. until those um, conditions are corrected. And again, the social pressure is for the public to walk by and say, gee, I don't think I'm going to eat there until the facility does correct these and you see a green placard. That's so that's the pressure saying. on the establishment. So now instead of us chasing the restaurants, how come you didn't correct it yet? How come you didn't correct it yet? Now they call us saying, Department of Health, I'm I corrected everything. Please come down and re-inspect. So it's a complete paradigm shift in who's responsible for doing what. Yeah. You bet. So that I, was the I idea was of the program. I ask you, I mean, when these yeah. guys have one of those right. conditional pass, mm -hmm. they're, they're probably going to call you and sure. talk mm -hmm. so nice to you. Right. And they're going to say, please, could you come <laughs> down as well? I don't know. I'm busy today. <laughs> no, no. See, that's, the object is not to punish the restaurant. So we have given... Um, guarantees to industry within one working day of You'll them notifying down. us, we will take it down if everything is correct. Okay, if you come back down right. and all the things right. that you were concerned right. about on either the uh, conditional pass mm -hmm. or the, uh, well, the close right. um, are corrected, yes. then you're going to give them a, we'll a, take, a pass. Yes, we'll take down the yellow placard and we'll replace it with a pass. Okay, yes. okay. I, I, I have a silly question. Uh -huh. uh, you know, when, when we went to school, we all went to school, mm -hmm. And uh, we got our report card, and we came home, mm -hmm. and we went to our mother, and the report card says pass. Uh -huh. Our mother would say, pass? That's, <laughs> that's it? You just passed? Uh -huh. You know, can't you do better for me, your mother? Mm -hmm. can't, you, can't you get a, a 90 or something, uh -huh. or an A, uh -huh. or even a B? Yes. So this doesn't really distinguish. Yeah, Do you have an excellent sign right. also, or a no. high pass, or anything? And let me tell you the beauty of this program. We did look at a letter grade system, A, B, C, and then the public would wonder, what does the C restaurant mean as far as public health? What does the B restaurant mean? So we decided to, everybody needs to get an A. So this is a zero tolerance program where all major violence, violations have to be corrected before you get this pass placard. So that's the whole philosophy behind it. So there's nothing in that facility should be after the inspection that um, could lead to a food bar. So illness, right? as far as the Department of Health mm -hmm. and me are concerned, right. if I see the pass, pass that's the best. Yes. But the, the, yes. And as far as you know, the government and the agency is concerned, this is the best you can do. Right. Everything that you exactly. wanted to correct has been correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, does, does the past count? I guess not. Does the, does the history of a restaurant count? Suppose mm -hmm. I have passes for the past year, mm -hmm. and then one day, uh, I don't do so well. Mm -hmm. Do you give me credit for that or no? It's all, every single inspection is on its own. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay, well that's right. You know, it's, every meal is on its own. <laughs> My health is on its own. All right. And again, <laughs> personnel changes so often. In restaurant, the food service industry, you probably have one of the most highest turnover rates sure. in employees of all professionals sure, in the sure. state. Sure, sure. Every so turnover is very a risk. Very high turnover, yeah. So. 
because you don't know who's walking exactly. in the door. It's so hard to hire people. Right. Right. So things, the environment in the restaurant does change with managers, head chefs come and go. So things yeah. do change. So what happens now in terms of uh, you know the cooperation? Let's assume you have the restaurant association that can cooperate with you. They're telling the members to cooperate, but some restaurants are more cooperative than mm -hmm. others. So uh, what happens when you get a call from one of your inspectors in the field, and he says, "Aaron, I'm having a problem. This guy is not buying it. You know, he wants me to leave the premises. Um, he doesn't like our system. Uh, he has some serious problems. What do you do? What do you say?" Well, for, we want to keep our um, inspectors safe. So all we do is tell them to make a notation, again, on their report, a report back to the office, and then we'll address it at a later time. Okay. Of course you want to keep them safe. And probably the first thing you should say is, don't eat there. <laughs> <laughs> eat somewhere else. <laughs> but uh, so now it's some other time, okay? Mm -hmm. He came back. He's, he's safe. There's been no alteration, alter, altercation or anything, mm -hmm. um, but you have a, a serious problem because they haven't cooperated. What are your options at that point? What can you do? Well, there are some illegal... Yeah, what, what's going to happen is once some, an owner or operator of a restaurant either interferes with, the, interferes with the inspection or refuses the inspection, it's ground for immediate suspension of the permit. So if we're ordered off-premises, we will notify the restaurant operator that if they do not let us complete the inspection, we're going to go to our attorney general and we're going to suspend the permit. So yeah. it's, it's not a maybe, we will go after them to suspend the And permit. when you suspend the permit, you send them a note, your permit is suspended. Correct, they need to go out of business. And if you, if you open your door and sell yeah. to one more customer, we're going to come down there. Exactly. Yeah, and close you physically. Right. And you have the power to do that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We have to go through our AG's office and then he would have to, at that point, um, file something with circuit court to get a judge's order to physically shoot sure up a restaurant it. door. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I noticed from that mm -hmm. news story, which I thought was really mm -hmm. educational, uh, was that in that case, mm -hmm. the, the restaurant was really off base because mm -hmm. they took the sign down. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and there was this big, it was really yeah. funny because, I mean, if you watch this as just a, an ordinary citizen, mm -hmm. you know what happened. Right. They, the, they took the sign down and they said, oh, it must have fallen down. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. I wouldn't have bought that myself. No, well, yeah, it was kind of <laughs> obvious on that case. The inspector did a real good job of physically walking up onto the window and looking to see if mm -hmm. anything was on the ground and there was nothing on the ground. And these some um, placards are put up in clear plastic slips that are self adhesive. Yeah. So if it's up it's on a glass, it's impossible. You have to physically pull it down mm -hmm. to get it off that. The point is, yeah. nobody touches this. Exactly. You don't want nobody anybody to touch it, switch it, mm -hmm. deface it in any way. Yes. Certainly don't take it down. So we've had issued over 600 of the yellow placards since July, since we started this program. And again, the restaurant industry has been very, very cooperative. Only two cases out of the 600 we posted where someone actually intentionally removed the placard. So we think it's been very, That's very because successful. because everyone tells your inspectors That's how to right. handle these situations, <laughs> you know. It's all about training. It's yeah, all about it interfacing is. with the public. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we have two minutes left, you guys, and uh, this is your opportunity to tell, tell the people anything you want to tell them about how to deal with this program, what their role is, you know, in terms of going to eat out, um, how, they should, how should, they should participate and treat the system. Use that camera. Aaron, you first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, now that you have the placards, you have, um, you can make... Um, better judgment as to where to eat. Um, this is, uh, we are giving you like complete discretion as far, I mean not discretion, but um, transparency to see what condition the establishment is in. And you can also request for our inspection reports if you're interested and uh, just safe eating guys. <laughs> Yeah, and for us, I guess the main thing is if you do see something that you think is out of whack, please don't hesitate to call us. Um, you are also our eyes and ears out there. I have 30 inspectors. We have over 6,000 establishments, and obviously we can't be at every place all the time. So it is very important for the public themselves, if they see something, and especially if they feel that they've gotten sick from a food establishment, to make sure to report it to the Department of Health. Because reporting the illnesses is very important to prevent other sure, people from to, getting sick. To help other people, yes, you know, exactly. to help your neighbor. Okay, one other question mm -hmm. that uh, you mentioned in passing about the food trucks, you yeah. know. And we've seen in Kaka'ako, mm -hmm. and I hope it continues, mm -hmm. actually, I think it's, it, does, right. it performs a great service right. for the public. Mm -hmm. 
um, the you know expanded number of food trucks, right. is, and I think it's part of the Hawaii culture. Actually, yes. I think Hawaii gave food trucks to the world. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so, how does this all differ with them? It's more complicated because they're not necessarily geographical. Right, they but come, yeah. they go. Yes. You know, how do you get a beat on them? What's the difference in enforcing the rules talking about food trucks? Same rules. They have to follow by all the same rules that any restaurant has to follow. In fact, food trucks have an additional burden because they cannot operate the food truck solo. They have to work out of a brick and mortar establishments to service that wagon, prepare the foods, um, store food. So they have two places to expect to get a permit done. Yeah. So again, and, but they're, as far as food safety, all the same rules and regulations apply to them. So they are no more dangerous or um, hazardous than any other restaurant. So you go and inspect the yes. brick and mortar place to Both. be sure that- And the wagon And, and the wagon. Yes. Yes. Okay, well that's, that's yeah. right, that's perfect. Okay, anything else? No, I think that's about it. Okay, well I, I have something else. You yeah. guys are great. Thank you oh, very thanks. much. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me. I think we learned a lot today and I think it's a good system and I think you're executing thanks. it well. So I hope we talk to you again soon. Okay, very good. <laughs> that's um, Peter Oshiro, uh, Environmental Health Program Manager and Aaron Villanueva Program Specialist at the Department of Health uh, concerned with the Food Safety Program. Um, better eating in Hawaii through the Department of Health here in Hawaii, the state of health. I'm Jay Fidel, and I had a good time. I hope you guys did. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>